Recording in progress. Oh, that's new. Yeah. That was so totally on your end, not mine. <laughs> that was on my end? Yep. I've never seen that before. I didn't do a thing differently. Must must be some new update or something. Probably. Oh, I see. Oh, you're recording on your end, aren't you, Kim? To the cloud, yeah. So I don't need to be recording. I must have hit the button accidentally. I just start, as soon as I started it, it said it. Okay. But it didn't say it on my end. It, I heard it in the sanctuary. Huh. Okay. Well, I'm not going to push stop because I don't know what um. I'm at. I just got a pop-up message about this meeting being recorded, just so you know. Yeah, I think we all did. Um, okay, are we ready? Uh, brothers and sisters, it's 9.30. Uh, if you can be taking your seats wherever you are, and uh, let's turn our attention to the Lord as we listen to the prelude, prepare to, to worship God together.
Praise God. Uh, may the peace of God our Father and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all, and may the Spirit of God come and fill this place in each one of us as we come to worship together. Uh, it is a great joy for us to, to be able to praise God, to receive His Word and His blessings into our lives. Nick, it's great to have you back. Thank you for playing for us. Good, good to see you again, and always wonderful to hear you play. Uh, just a few announcements as we begin our worship service. Uh, we are with some new guidelines now there on the screen, and thank you for following those. It's good to be able to, to see one another's faces a little bit more uh, as uh, people get vaccinated. That is a blessing. This is Pentecost Sunday. I look around and I see a lot of red. Uh, that's one of the ways we mark and observe this day, uh, an important day in the life of the church. And we remember how God poured out His Holy Spirit upon believers on that first Pentecost Sunday. And we are grateful for the continued gift of the Holy Spirit, which He pours out upon each one of us as we trust in Christ. I want to say thank you also to the... Uh, Outreach Committee, they've been uh, trying to get our church out there in the community and our name out there, community with some mass mailings, a very nice uh, mass mailing that went out this past week using one of our stained glass windows of the descending Holy Spirit and grateful for their work. And, uh, don't know if uh, uh, any might have been Zooming on with us today who are new, but we are grateful for all those who are with us in person and those who may be zooming in with us it's it's good to have you as a part of our fellowship this morning and i pray that god would bless you and fill you with his peace and his spirit as we worship today our call to worship is from psalm 105 oh give thanks to the lord call upon his name Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praise to him. Tell of all his wondrous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Let us worship God as we sing together our opening hymn, hymn number 290.
I invite you to remind, remain standing as we affirm our faith together. This morning we are using a very ancient creed, the Nicene Creed, and I like to use it on Pentecost because it emphasizes the work of the Holy Spirit among us. So we join together with believers everywhere and throughout time as we affirm our faith together. Please join me. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. And in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of the Father and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And we believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And we believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. We come before our almighty God, and we seek his forgiveness, his cleansing for our sins. Uh, if you will join me in the prayer of confession printed in the bulletin. Heavenly Father, you have redeemed us in Christ and given us your Holy Spirit to transform our lives. We confess that we have sinned against you and that the works of the flesh are all too evident in us. Wash us clean from all our sins and work in us so that we might walk in the Holy Spirit and bear the fruit of the Spirit in our lives. This we pray in the precious name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Would you please join me as we keep a moment of silence so that we might offer to God our individual prayers of confession. Let us pray. The Lord God gives us this hopeful assurance in his word. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Brothers and sisters, believe the good news of the gospel. Through faith in Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Our psalm for this morning is a selection from Psalm 51. Will you please join me as we read God's word responsively, and if you will respond with the bold face type. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence 
and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. Glenn, if you'll come and lead us in our next song, please. One moment for me to get the words up, sorry. Allison, if you'll come and do our Bible reading for us, please. Thank you. Um, Acts 2, verses 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, 
devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound, the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Perithians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others mocking said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these people are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Thank you very much, Allison. Okay, if we have any kids with us, I'd love for you to come on the screen. I'd love to be able to... Recording in progress. Okay. I invite you to turn with me in your Bibles to John chapter 3. And let's pray. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, this is your word and we are your people. And we thank you for bringing us together and giving us your word. We thank you, O Lord, for the gift of your Holy Spirit, which you have poured out on all believers. And Lord, we pray that you would fill us with your Holy Spirit that you would do what you have promised to do, that, that your spirit would come and be our teacher, that your spirit would help us to hear your word clearly, but also to receive it, to believe it, to live by it, to apply it in our lives. And Lord, we pray that you would use your word and your spirit now to do a thing, to change us, to transform us, to mold us in the shape of Christ. Lord, we pray that your spirit would work so powerfully now that we would not leave untouched and unchanged, but that we would be inspired and encouraged and stretched and loved because you have been with us in your word and in your spirit. 
So be glorified now through the reading of your word and the preaching of the word, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our text for this morning is John chapter 3, and I'm reading the first 21 verses. Hear the word of God. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you the teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak of what we know and bear witness to what we have seen, but you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you of earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except he who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned. But whoever does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world, and people love the darkness rather than the light, because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his works should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Spirit of God is real. He is invisible, but very powerful. We can't see him but we can see what he does. And what he does is change us to make us different, to make us new. And this transformation that the Spirit accomplishes, this transformation is so extensive and so deep that it is like being born again. I call the Spirit, the Holy Spirit here, I refer to him with a personal pronoun, he. That's the way the Bible talks of the Holy Spirit, as a he, and not as an it. That's what I want you to see, that he is part of the Trinity, the, the, the three in one, God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit, all, all together in, in a mysterious way. And I'll, 
unpack those relationships another time, but I want you, want, I want you to see as we have three in one, one God, three persons. The Holy Spirit is a person with intelligence and will and purpose and an ability to communicate personally. He is powerful, but not just power or energy or an impersonal force. The Father and the Son sent the Spirit to dwell within us. And when the Spirit dwells within us, we are changed. We are changed. Pentecost is a word for an ancient Jewish harvest festival. It was a, a first fruits festival, a, a first bringing in of the harvest. Uh, and that day, it was also called the Feast of Weeks um, because it was, its time was marked by an earlier festival. First came Passover, which was the celebration of God leading His people out of bondage in Egypt. And then came the Festival of Weeks, which was a week of weeks later, seven sevens, 49th days. And then on the 50th day, the celebration of weeks began, 50th. Pentecost is just a word meaning 50th, 50th day or Feast of Weeks. But people would come over all over, just as they came out from all over at Passover, they would come from all over the world on Pentecost, and they would come to worship alongside the Jews, this, this time of celebration that God brings harvest. So people were coming, they were coming from all over, and they expected it to be like maybe other years when they had been in Jerusalem for this festival. But it's not like other years. Something very unexpected happens on this Pentecost. First, we're told that there is a, a loud noise. It is like a rushing wind, and not just a gentle breeze, but, but more like listening to a, a forceful gale or a or tornado. It is enough to get everyone's attention. And then there is something else. So, so people are, are, are stopping whatever they're doing, and they think, what, what is that wind? What is going on? And, and then they see, it, it looks like some sort of a fiery thing up in the sky. And this, this fire uh, just starts coming down. And it's coming down and resting on certain people. And so now all the attention is on them, right? There's this noise and this, this, this fire, fingers of fire, they're coming down and they're resting on top of certain people. And so people start to dra draw near. What, what is going on? What's happening to these people? And then as, as we draw close, we hear that they are talking about Jesus. And they're talking about God sending Jesus and how He died and how He rose again. And the amazing thing is that they are saying these words in all different languages. So here's a person, and he's traveled, say, from Egypt, and he's coming into the Promised Land, and uh, he's coming into Jerusalem, and uh, he maybe has been there many, many years, and he speaks what they speak in Egypt. He doesn't speak Aramaic. He doesn't speak Hebrew, but he kind of knows what's going on, and he can join in with the worship and is glad to be there. But he comes into Egypt. He's made this long journey. He comes into, into Jerusalem. He hears this noise. He sees these flames, and he comes down on a person not too far from him, and he hears this person speaking of Jesus, but he's speaking Egyptian. And he's saying, I know this is a local guy. What is going on? And Peter gets up to explain. Long before Jesus came, God spoke through the prophet Joel and said this day would come and He would pour out His Spirit upon all people, all believers, all His people. 
And then Jesus, when he did come, before he died, he promised. He said, I'm going to I'm, I'm going to die, and I will be raised on the third day. I'm going to go away from you. But there is a way in which it is good that I go, because when I go, I will send the Holy Spirit upon you, the Helper. And then after Jesus was raised, he appeared again to his followers, and he said, stay in Jerusalem until the Holy Spirit comes and you are filled with his power. And so God has actually fulfilled all of these promises in an amazing way on the day of Pentecost. It actually happened. It changed history. The question is, can it change us? And if so, how? And I want to look at that question and seek to answer it by looking at this encounter that Jesus has with Nicodemus. Just, just two characters on the scene, just, knees, just Jesus and Nicodemus, this, this Jewish leader. But I think we're going to see here through that conversation, through what Jesus says to Nicodemus, we will see that we must be changed. And we will see that the Holy Spirit changes us and that he does so as we believe in Jesus. We must be changed. The Spirit changes us as we believe in Christ. We must be changed. We must be changed if we are going to be rescued from this world, which Jesus said is a, is a world that is perishing. It is a world that stands under condemnation because it has rejected God and the one that God has sent. If we are to be rescued from this world and to be part of God's eternal kingdom, then we must be changed. We must be changed. Now, Nicodemus is a deeply religious man. He is an esteemed leader. He is moral and upright in his character. He is respected in so many ways as as a godly teacher. But he comes now and he calls Jesus teacher. He, He acknowledges that Jesus is a teacher. And he is willing and eager to learn from him. How shocked he must have been to hear Jesus say, you must be born again. You must be born again. Nicodemus, you need a total overhaul. And we listen into the conversation and we think, if that's true of Nicodemus, is it true for us too? Do we need to be changed? What about us? You know, for the most part, I think people, human beings in general, t- tend to think, well, we're, we're okay. We're not perfect, but we're, we're okay. We're good enough. If, if there is a God, He knows that uh, oh, I'm doing my best. And I, I mess up from time to time, but uh, I, think we're, I think we're good. I think we're good. But God is not looking for just small adjustments, a little church going, a little reformed behavior, a little more Bible knowledge, a little adjustment in our priorities and lifestyles. No, He is looking for us to be made new, over again, born again. We must be changed. We must be transformed from unbelievers into believers, from from those who are just following our own desires to those who follow Jesus. We must be changed. And Jesus teaches that the Holy Spirit is able to do this very thing. The Holy Spirit is able to change us. That might be hard for us to believe, and I'm going to come back to that, why I think it's hard for us to believe, but it is true. The Bible teaches us, God reveals to us that the Spirit is powerful and is able to change us. I want to just give you a smattering of the ways that He's able to change us. We we could see it throughout Scripture, but we see, for example, that the Holy Spirit is able to convict us of sin. 
to get through that feeling, oh, I, th- I think I'm pretty good. No, the Holy Spirit is able to say, maybe you're not so good as you think you are. John 16, and Jesus said, And when he, the helper, the Holy Spirit, comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Also in that John 16, he says that the Spirit will come and he will teach us. The Spirit teaches us so that we can understand and apply God's truth. When the Spirit of God comes, He will guide you into all the truth, Jesus says. And the Spirit can, can build new qualities and new, new character into our lives. Either, either take what is there and, and, and help it to grow or put it there in the first place. And some of these characteristics are things that we long for. And the Bible says the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. The Spirit is able to reassure us that we belong to God. When we have those moments, does God really love me? Does God really hear me? Does, has God really forgiven me? Well, God has given us the Spirit. Romans 8, the Spirit bears witness. The Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Just that, you know, the devil is always there saying, no, you're not. No, you're not. And the Spirit is living in us say, oh, yes, you are. The Spirit helps us pray. Romans 8, the Spirit Himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. The Spirit helps us tell other people about Jesus, which is hard for us. But, but God says, Jesus says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses. The Holy Spirit is able to do all of these things. And He's not only able to do such things, He is the only one who can do that which must be done. And that is to make us new. To transform us so that we are alive spiritually. Well, what do I, what do I mean by that? What, what do I mean by being alive spiritually? Jesus says, that which is flesh, born of the flesh, is flesh. Uh, That which has a physical origin has physical life. We are physically alive, and that's good. Now, the life that we have is sometimes hard, but it is good and enjoyable in many ways. Just, just think of our senses. We are able to see beautiful, wonderful colors and, and, and grand landscapes. We are able to hear music and the conversation of a loved one and the songs of birds. We can feel textures and and make things with our hands. We can, we could smell spices and flowers and good food. And we could taste that good food. The sweet and the bitter and the salty and the spicy. That which is born of the flesh can do all these things. But you know what it can't do? It can't see God. It can't know God. It can't grow close to God. That requires a new sense, a new capacity, a new life, a spirit-born life, a spiritual life. That which is born of the Spirit is spirit, is spiritually alive. And Jesus says, that must happen. 
And the Spirit can make that happen in you and in me. Jesus says to this respected, revered, educated, powerful Jewish leader, you must be born again. And unless one is born again, he can't even see the kingdom of God. There's, there's no capacity for it. You can't see the kingdom of God unless you're born again. And he says, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Jesus now, when he repeats this and reiterates it, he brings better water and spirit. And I think he knows exactly what he's doing. Nicodemus knows his Bible better than I do and better than most of us, I venture. And I, I'm sure that Jesus thinks Nicodemus is going to think on a very important Old Testament passage from Ezekiel chapter 36, where God promises through Ezekiel, God promises, God says, I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean from all your uncleanness. And from all your idols, I will cleanse you. And I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you. And I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statues and be careful to obey my rules. God places his spirit within us. And the Spirit can transform us completely so that we have a new spirit and a new heart and a new character and a new sense of belonging and we are made new. How can that be? How can that be? That's what Nicodemus says. What? What are you talking about? How can an old man be born again? Can, can, can he enter his mother's womb a second time? That's just absurd. You're, you're saying words, but I don't know what they mean. That's what Nicodemus wants to know how, and that's what we want to know how. And what Jesus is doing here in this encounter with Nicodemus, Jesus is preaching the gospel. And Jesus is saying, first, God must do something. God must send his son, and his son must die and be raised again. Jesus says, no one is ascended into heaven. I know you want to go there, Nicodemus. No one is ascended into heaven except the one who came from there, the Son of Man. That's Jesus. And the Son of Man must be lifted up. He must be lifted up on the cross to make atonement for our sins. Jesus had to be lifted up on the cross to die in our place to pay the penalty for our sins. So God must do that thing. And then the Spirit must open our eyes to see the truth and our ears to hear and to receive this testimony, this announcement, this news. And that's faith. That's belief. We must believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and in what he has done putting our trust in Jesus and his cross and his resurrection, believing that his death has made us clean, that his rising from the grave has given us everlasting life. Do we believe it? Do we believe this? Do we believe that Jesus is able to make us new? Do we believe that we are forgiven and loved and adopted because we follow Jesus? Do we believe that he is able to change us and to put our sins more and more behind us so that we might become more and more like Jesus and experience his love and his joy and his peace? Do we believe that he will do that for us? Do we believe that he does that for others? We may hear the good news of Jesus many times over. I think most of us hear this, this good news probably several times before it sinks in. But there's something that happens. At some moment, it does grip us, and we start to hope. 
Can that be true for me? Can my sins be washed away? Can I know God? Can I know His joy and His peace and His patience in my own life? Can, can I live with Him forever? And when we start to think these things, that's the Holy Spirit at work within us and calling to us. Look to Jesus. Believe in Jesus. And Jesus said to Nicodemus, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. Now, you may not remember that passage. I'm sure Nicodemus did from Numbers 21. When God led the people out of bondage in Egypt, and they are wandering now in, in the desert and and you know, the desert isn't where they want to be and things aren't quite as they expect and they're grumbling against God. God, this isn't the way we think things ought to be. They, they grumble. They start to rebel against God. God sends snakes and they bite people and people start dying. And God tells Moses, he says, I want you to, to make a serpent, a snake out of bronze and lift it up onto a pole. And tell the people, look at the serpent, and they will be healed. And the people are saying, how can that be, right? Uh, no, I'm, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to can find some herbs that will work as an anti venom or draw the poison out, or run away as fast as I can. And you mean to tell me all I have to do is look up there and look at the snake that is lifted up? Well, the people that did that were healed. The people that did that were healed. And Jesus said, just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up. And you must look. You must look to Jesus. You must trust in Jesus, and he will make you new. For all of us who are Christ followers, Jesus, the Spirit has done that. Uh, we, we sing in the old hymn, Amazing Grace, how precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. Do you remember that hour? For some of us, that was an hour or two ago, right? That may have been a long time ago. We might have forgotten what that felt like when we first knew that we were forgiven, that God loved us with a redeeming love. It may be so far away that we've forgotten it and it's lost some of its shine for us and we start to think maybe it's just all in the past. That's why I say that faith is harder than we sometimes think. Faith is challenging and stretching for us. We may be led to think, you know, I, I did believe, and, I, and I, I, I think that God has made me his own, but, but I don't know that anything else is happening. I think my life is pretty much the way it's going to be. Um, maybe I'm better than I used to be, but I'm probably just about as good as I'm going to get. But the Spirit keeps working. The Spirit keeps working and helping us to grow to be like Jesus. And I think the other thing that is hard for us to believe, I think it's hard for us sometimes to believe that he can actually change other people too. That the Spirit can actually change my neighbor. That the Spirit can actually change my coworker who seems so anti-God that the Spirit can actually change and, and transformingly love my friends and my loved ones who are not walking with Him. I think we struggle to believe that. And that is why I am so excited by what God has done for us at Pentecost to remind us again that He comes to us not with a message only, 
but with power to change, with power to make us new. And I think we need to be reminded of that, brothers and sisters, because I think sometimes we feel like dry bones, weary and worn out and skeptical and disillusioned. God came and spoke to his people through the prophet Ezekiel, and he said, I will make you clean. I will wash you clean. I will put my spirit within you. And then, after he said this to the people through Ezekiel, he gave Ezekiel an illustration, a vision. And he led Ezekiel in his vision to this valley, and it was full of dry bones. And he said to Ezekiel, essentially, okay, Ezekiel, you've just heard of the power of my spirit. Do you believe it? Look at this valley of dry bones. And God says to Ezekiel, can these bones live? And then God says to the bones, I will cause my breath to enter into you, and you will live. And there is a rattling in the valley, and the toe bone was connected to the foot bone, and you know the rest. And God made these valley of dry bones rise into a living, spirit-filled, God-breathed army that stood before him. And God says to Ezekiel, The people say, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. But I will put my spirit within you and you shall live and I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken and I will do it, declares the Lord. Let us pray. O oh Lord our God, the people say, and we often feel, that we are dry bones. Lord, speak to these dry bones. To the one who is not a follower of Jesus, speak. To the one who who may be religious in a lot of ways and good like Nicodemus was, who yet needs to be reborn, Lord, speak. To the one who is longing for forgiveness, for love and joy and peace to come into their hearts, but has given up hope, Lord, speak. And by the power of your Holy Spirit, turn our eyes from off the dryness and the desiccation of the valley floor to Jesus high and lifted up and risen in glory. And to those of us who are Christians but still struggling with frustrations and pains and disappointments and feeling powerless, Enable us to believe in the Holy Spirit and His power. Breathe your life into our troubled souls and tired bodies. Remove our stony hearts. Renew us and revive our congregation and our communities and our nations. Give us power to witness. And let your Holy Spirit even now fulfill His his promised work to intercede for us. Lord, hear our prayers. Hear our praises, praises for the blessing that you have done because you are good and you are powerful. Thank you for Bill and Peggy and their 45 years together. Lord, you have power to bring people together and to keep them together. By the power of your Holy Spirit, strengthen our marriages and our families, O Lord. We thank you for the birth of Everett Joy Chambers and rejoice in Norm and Joy and their, their clan's uh, delight in this precious baby. Lord, uh, birth is, 
is astonishing. It, it fills us with, with hope and gladness. Lord, as you, have, as you have brought this new life, this birth into the world, would you continue to cause people to be reborn by your Spirit? And Lord, we pray for your religious leaders all over the world, for other people like Nicodemus, for people who serve you and, and who know of your message of rebirth. We pray for Pastor Ed and his wife, Fasta, and their health issues. And Lord, thank you for their faithfulness. And Lord, I thank you. I, th I thank you as a pastor for what it means to know that Pastor Ed is praying for me and for us. And Lord, your Spirit is interceding for us in just that way all the time. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And Lord, we, we pray for Pastor Micah in Uganda and for his right-hand man, Pastor Ben, uh, who, who is dependent upon so greatly in that growing ministry. And now Pastor Ben has a very advanced form of cancer. And Lord, it will take a miracle by your Holy Spirit. But Lord, as you are able to change lives and change circumstances in our lives, would you, would you touch him with your healing power? And would you touch all of those who are crying out for healing or relief from pain or recovery from surgeries? Lord, you are able, you are strong and mighty. Lord, we pray that your spirit would hover over places of uh, discord and enmity and brokenness, whether that be in individual hearts or in relationships and families or between nations. Lord, we pray for your hand to be upon the Middle East and the ceasefire. Let that hold and reign as Prince of Peace, we pray. Lord, you know the other prayers, the, the private griefs that we are bearing, the, the, uh, the disappointments we feel the, the uh, discouragement, the, the burdens that we are carrying. Lord, sometimes we feel so hopeless, but remind us that you have poured out your Holy Spirit upon us with great power. So, Lord, receive our prayers through the intercession of your Spirit and hear us as we pray together as Jesus taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us uh, close our worship as we sing our praises together.
Go forth now under the grace and the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ. May the breath of God fill you and lead you. And may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. Amen. Good to see you, brothers and sisters. Thanks for being with us.